Once upon a time, in a place far, far away, somewhere in South America it's rumored, there was a little fishing village, and this is where Conquistador got his name. Good day, folks. Greg Bud from Bud's Baits here. Welcome to the African Lure Craftsman. So my idea has been to produce something like this. Um, this is a one of my standard baits, the 165 Kickstick. Uh, but I'm going to do a freestyle sort of version of it, and it's a new color I've done this, which I'm calling Midnight Oil. Um, and I thought it would be very, very in line with the theme that Bruce, my friend, wanted. Um, I thought a black lure would fit in with that theme and what I'm going to try and do is get the conquistador writing on the back of the lure and it's going to be a swimming lure and a, and a finished lure um, a wide through lure but it's going to be something that he's going to put up in his man cave in a presentation box the next step is we're going to slot the belly very easy way we always we know where the front is and we know where the nose is so roughly there but a good way to get that is to just run the pencil sideways And you'll have pretty much the middle of the the center of the lure in a very straight line. Voila. Bearing in mind that everything here is freestyle, um, for my standard lures that I do sell uh, commercially, um, I have jigs cut, I have a different way of slotting the belly, I have various systems in place. But for this freestyle, I'm just going to use a little cutting tool on a Dremel. Be very careful. I've been doing this for a long time. Um, in fact, this is a little bit blunt, but we'll do our best. Line the lure up. I've got a good eye for this. Start in the middle. Just making sure I get a line all the length of the lure before I make the actual slot. Okay, so we've cut the slot in the belly there. Uh, the length of the blade and the depth it can cut is limited. So what I'm going to do now is just deepen that hole a little bit with a very, very sharp 3mm drill bit. And we also need to widen the slot a little bit as well. Quite easy, be very careful with your hands. So I basically drilled down the depth of the slot. I haven't drilled all the way, I'm leaving that as it is, because those are the uh, right depth and width for the wires that I'll be fitting later. You don't want to make the whole channel too wide, and then you've got to locate the wires in the right place. They locate it perfectly right now, so I'll leave those at the narrow width they are at. I'm going to clean up this hole, again using the same drill bit, and again being very careful. Basically all we want to do is we've drilled those holes, We've scoured the inside and it's going to be a lot easier now to drag this drill bit down the length of the lure and just widen the hole. So what we're going to go on with now is forming the wire freestyle. At a later stage what we will do is we will take you on a few um, adventures, maybe making some wire bending jigs and things like that. 
uh, and the various other things like jigs and stuff that make cutting a standard bait very very easy because obviously making any freestyle bait is quite a tall task it can take quite a while the equipment you'll need for your wiring of your lure so what I've got here is 1.6 millimeter stainless steel this is actually TIG wire TIG welding wire it works very very well nothing in my experience has ever broken it it's quite easy to manipulate and shape so that's what we're going to be using there these two ingredients here are what I set the wire in with but we'll go into that later because that's a little bit of a hack uh, it's something you've got to be careful with but a little bit of a hack and it sets that wire, wire in like it's steel and then obviously your shaping pliers or your rigging pliers which are your round pliers like so and your flat pliers like this okay so what we'll do is we'll start at the front end of the lure we'll lay the wire in the slot make sure it's long enough which i've pre-checked and it is we want the wire to exceed the lure or be be over double the length basically so that's almost two and a half times the length there and the reason being is because after the loops it's got to fold back almost on top of itself we bind this wire as well this is 50 pound braid which i find is the best thing to bind your wire with a lot easier than welding and I can assure you that it will never, never break. All your tension on, on your wire when under strain with a fish, no matter how big, is going to be front, bottom tension and back tension. It's going to be trying to pull the wire apart. And as long as it's bound in the middle and on all, the, all sides in the center and epoxied in there, in fact, not epoxied using my technique, there's no way that's ever going to come apart. I've tested these lures, actually drop tested them to 200 kgs. That's a 200 kg weight on these. The wire will start deforming and the split rings will break. And that's very serious split rings. Double Gamagatsu uh, 116 kg split rings. They'll break or bend before the wire starts doing anything. So it's a very, very tried and tested and durable and strong method. My midpoint is going to be just below the fin here. So I'm going to take the wire in there and mark it with my fingers where I need to do the first bend. I'm going to go down here, get my round pliers minus the braid again and form my loop. Taking the wire right to the, the, the butt of the pliers here or whatever you want to call that bit there, sure, probably not the butt. Um, and bending it around both ways. Remember, you want a very perfectly formed loop. So we've cut our slot here. As you'll see, though, I've left the front and the back of the slot a narrow width than the rest of this. I've widened it out. There's no real easy way to do this without the right tools, but with a Dremel and drill bits, you can cut your slots in prototypes or individual freestyle lures. Um, once you've got a pattern of a lure, obviously you set up more tooling to do the job properly, so you can do it quicker. But we've just done it very cursorily there. It doesn't have to be smooth. Uh, we've bent our wire and preformed our wire. And we've made sure it fits and everything's in the right place. The reason we leave it narrower is so that the front toe point and the two hook points, or the back hook point particularly, are immediately flush and in the right position with the actual slot being the same width as the wire in those two positions. So that's perfect there. The next step I'll take is binding the wire. I could probably be accused of over-engineering everything um, because as I say these uh, these lures are very very strong or the way I, I put them together is very strong but I do take every precaution necessary because the last thing you want is a lure to come apart. So another precaution I take here is the tag ends of the wire here. I mean, as you'll see, we've got quite a long stem there that'll enter into the lure body and be covered with my epoxy type mixture as well as the front there. But I'll bend these tag ends up on the ends and then they will be bound here yeah, with 50 pound braid, which will be super glued into place as well. So I'm just going to do that quickly here. Just a small tag end at a right angle and bend it up just like that do the same with the other side 
You might have to trim them a little bit later, depending if your, your weights, you need a, a sinking lure and you need more weight. Sometimes that does get in the way of the weight, but um, normally it's, it's fine. So there we have it, two ends up. The next step I'll do is I'll grab my 50 pound braid. As I say, I've got a pre-cut piece here. I will put it under the wire, hold it with my thumb, hold both pieces together and just start binding it very, very tightly. All the length right up to the, the toe point and then back again. And there's nothing, I can assure you, that is going to pull this apart. The forces that are put on this wire cannot break this bond. And then to tag it off, I'll go back under that wire again. Pull that tight, grab the super glue, and then just soak that in super glue. and set it aside to dry before we do the other side. So what I have here are, are pre-molded lead strips. For freestyle or prototype, I, what, I, what I like to do is just basically cast them into strips. I can cut this to different lengths as, as I require, or double it, or do many, many things with it, and shape that to the required weight for a, a freestyle lure. What I do that with is just normally a little bit of 10 mil steel plate and a hammer and we just tap it away into the shapes we want. Just trying to flatten this at the moment because what I'm going to do is flatten it, double it over. I'm going to front weight this lure to get a, a better swimming action which I do with a lot of my stick baits. Okay so I've taken off a chunk of the the lead that I'm going to be using to weight the lure here. It's not shaped fully yet in fact, it's not quite shaped at all. I just want to weigh it. I want to get an approximate. I'm probably looking for about 25, 30 grams. That's 35 or 38 at the moment, actually. So we're going to trim that a bit and continue to shape. Just using wire cutters. Very easy to do. 28. I think we'll go with 28 and... Sorry, combined with the lure, that'll make a 60 gram lure perfect for that size. That'll be a sink, but it'll be a pretty, I wouldn't say slow sink, but you have a very workable sort of sinking rate. Swimmability is a very important factor uh, in my lures. So I like my stick baits even to have a natural swimming action. Uh, a lot of stick baits and they all work. I'm not criticizing them. Um, don't have any action unless you impart that action into them with the rod tip. What I do for that is I do my weight placement forward in that sort of position. So I'll have to s open the slot here a little bit, shape this weight a little bit more, probably on the grinder. Of course, do all these things wearing a mask. Don't handle lead too much if you can avoid it. Um, and I'll get that fitting in probably near the wire there, the middle uh, toe point and towards the nose. And I think that that will be swimming straight off the bat. Um, castability, I've said before, most lures, particularly if they're heavier lures, will turn into wind anyway. If anything, you'll lose maybe a few feet from your cast, that's my belief. Um, but weighting the lure at the back here, as a lot of people like to do, or even in the middle, you lose all your swim. Um, you can impart action on it, but you don't get a natural swim. And by that, I think what I'll have to do is show you uh, when we swim test this lure, which we'll do in its raw state before painting. Um, we'll just finish it up, seal it, get the lead in, and we'll do a little bit of a swim test on that. We're going to go on with the next steps just now, but what I'd like to do first is always make sure it fits perfectly, line it up, and that, I think, there, if you can see, is perfect. Check all the angles, see that you've got the right angles with the wires on the back, on the front, which we have, and we're going to be ready to set the wire and the glue in place. 